Hey guys, I'm Adam if you're new here and if you're returning then you know what's good. Today I want to get into my Notion setup. A few of you guys have asked me like when I've mentioned it, what does my Notion setup look like? How do I use it to plan in terms of my financial goals, my fitness goals, you know, my hobbies, all of that sort of stuff. And so I thought during this kind of time of the year and just into 2023 and beyond, it'd be useful for you guys to kind of take a look at my setup directly versus me just explaining it. So I'm going to open this up, share my screen with you guys, and yeah, let's just get into it. There's a cat in this area that cries like a baby. And so I'm sorry if you if you hear him. <laughs> notion, notion, notion. Also, I just assume that you know what Notion is. Notion is a planning system. It's all over the internet. Everybody loves it. Notion girls, Notion guys, like <laughs> it's a really popular planning tool. And it's because it kind of gives you a lot of freedom. And I know that can be really intimidating because then you have to craft the whole thing. But I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so here we are in 2023. I recently kind of broke them up my 2022 one which is what i've been using all of uh, 2022 obviously but i didn't want to get rid of it like and i kind of wanted it in a similar space so if i wanted to go back and check something but enough that they were separate that i understood that this is a new year not new me but it, it's definitely a new year in home with the weekly check-in i'm going to skip the bits that i just don't think are very interesting or useful um and just focus on the bits that i've actually spent a lot of time in because i mean yeah so here is basically where I like to have my weekly check-in, like I said. So keep a tab of the type of things that I'm going to be getting on with um, and organize them in like this kind of to-do style framework. I also have reoccurring tasks. I don't have to keep typing everything out. I just have this space here where things I know I'm going to perform multiple times potentially. I just have that set out as you can see over here. Um, so Monday, if I go gym at seven, I'm going to do a warm up, do that particular exercise, treadmill, uh, if you've got a YouTube video, you can see all of the steps that are involved with that. So that's how I like to visualize my um, my week in Notion. And then I have my habit tracker, which is basically just a simple table. But here I can kind of track the things that I am expected or expecting myself to do on a day to day basis. So like gym, um, my step count, water, posting content. And then because I think content is such a big part of my life, it may not be for you, but if you are a content creator, then I think this will be really useful. Um, a lot of what I have to say, then I have this kind of content upload checklist so I can keep track of, you know, am I uploading? Am I not? Is there a particular type of content that I'm leaning towards and so forth? Um, so that's kind of it. And then I just have a monthly events bit, which is literally just a calendar in this sense. So, okay, so then we have new year planning. Now this particular space here is a new space for me. Um, I'm using it right now just to get a lot of my ideas out of my head before the new year starts. So I've broken it down into like finances, relationship and social, travel. And something that's actually really interesting because the others are just like me going in depth about my, my goals for the year. is something called the anti-vision. And I recently came across this with um, Dan Coe and his video where he's talking about effectively it's harnessing the power of negative emotions. Um, and so I intend to, because I'm still in my planning session for, for the new year, to kind of use that. So that's basically the idea that it's easier sometimes to know what you don't want than what you do want, right? Because there's that saying that you don't know what you don't know. I know if I've encountered something that I might not want to ever do it again, right? Um, like a particular business or a particular job or a particular type of person or a particular environment, right? And so sometimes the anti-vision can be easier to formulate and then you know to start to build these things around it as well as your normal vision board and all that sort of stuff, which there's no problem with. But if you've seen my video on visualization, then um, you understand that you can harness the power of both positive and negative emotions. So this is just a really interesting thing that I can't wait to get into, but okay. So this is a planning. I just think it's generally good at the end of the year to have a space separate from everywhere else where you can just get your ideas onto paper without thinking, oh, this needs to look pretty, it needs to be this. This part here is just getting the ideas down. But let's start to get into some pretty because I've, I think you guys need to see pretty. Goals. So this section here is all about goals as it would depict. So how I have structured it is I have this kind of home page that you kind of land on and then I have my long-term goals that sit here. And for example, if I open up fitness, you'll be able to see how I've structured it. So I like to have what's the most important thing for you in this category. Like what is it that you're really interested in that really matters here? And so that's kind of what I have that there. And then I have a table and the only real things that I'm interested here on this higher level is what is the goal and why? Um, and so for example, here I have to maintain my weight at or below 
10 stone right and I have my reasons here like I feel most comfortable um, in my body at this this particular weight my clothes feel and fit me well given my height I feel like this is and my muscle mass it's a comfortable place for me and so forth or my next one which is like to stretch after every workout um, it's because I have joint issues well I don't have joint issues but I have had issues with tightness and you know tightness around the joints because I'm not stretching enough and my goal moving forward and like I said my most important thing is to have overall health. I don't just want big muscles um, or an aesthetic like physique, but my actual mechanics or my insides are not as healthy as they could be. And so this, these kind of goals are all about establishing, yes, you've said this is it, but why? Because being able to come back to that why can take you through like, you know, when things are getting, getting a bit rough and it's like the end of the workout and you really don't want to stretch. So here we have then goals broken down into months. So here we have January because I've kind of just outlined January because it's close. First I like quote of the month just like an idea about what's the most important thing for you this month or like what kind of is the direction of this month and here I've got one that says never underestimate the power you have to take your life in a new direction and then I have a word of the month consistency like <laughs> if you saw my first podcast you know that um, I spoke about a lot of things, but wanting to be consistent and showing up is a really big thing for me in the new year and in January. And so I just have some points about my focus and then I just have the goal list itself, which is here. Um, and as you can see, I have, it is just making sure it's still recording. I have my goal. So here we have upload one YouTube video a week, uh, a period per week, the category, it's content creation and YouTube. Has it been achieved? That obviously comes at the end of the, uh, the month. And then any notes that I wanna make around these particular things. And I like to categorize things because um, if I wanna view anything in Notion and like lists or tables and stuff in a certain type of way, like I just want to see all my content creation goals, I can do that because I've now categorized. Um, and so that's that. And then I have reflections. So like, this is my space at the end of every month to go, you know, like, like these questions say, what went well? What are you most proud of? Uh, how did you have a positive impact? And again, stemming from in part my video on um, my podcast, I was talking about needing to spend time reflecting on what has gone well and what you've done well. And so that's kind of what that is over there. But also what could have gone better? Because the likelihood is nothing goes perfect and things maybe could have gone better. And what took you off your course? And then how can you use all this to grow into the next month? I think it's really important that you don't kind of get too stuck in either side of too positive, I'm the best, I don't need to do anything, or too negative, I'm trash, it's all over. But how do you take what's gone well and what's gone not so well and use all that information, that database of information you've collected to grow and improve in the next month? So that's that. Um, content creation. Okay, this is probably how I actually started using Notion is because I could organize my content creation in ways that I couldn't before and have it just all in this one place. So um, yes, I have this kind of area that's just about things that I kind of want to get done in the, the most immediate. But if we focus in here, I will show you kind of how I like to structure things. Let me, so you can see this is my board where I have my ideas. I have like the next 10 videos that I may, that are kind of like most of interest to me, videos I may want to get done in the next month, any that are already in writing. And then I have uh, ready to record recorded, edited, uploaded, um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And then I can view them in different ways. I can view like a calendar view and see what, what's got, what I've got going on basically. And yes, I also have a table format, but I don't use this that much for my YouTube content. Um, I really just like looking at the board effectively. Short form content is something that's relatively new for me, um, but I kind of have a similar format. I just like to get all my ideas out on the table, again, tag it or categorize it, have a, when did I upload it? And the kind of status is that. And just again, using that board view, using that calendar view to kind of see what am I trying to get at? So this is the thing with all these views is, am I trying to visualize upload schedules? Am I trying to visualize where I am in my idea process? What am I trying to get at? Which is why Notion is just so, it's so powerful effectively relatively new is the podcast stuff and that's what I'm working on right now and then I just have other things which is just random video ideas that I had from because I've been on YouTube for like three years now I don't really want to get rid of them but they don't really fit anywhere quite nicely yet so I've just left those there next let's talk about the health tracker so again I've kind of taken some of those long-term goals health goals and broken them down into here so in order for me say to have mobility and stuff I'm going to need to do something like yoga and pilates 
uh, one time a week or if I really want to have a good internal system, um, hydrated <laughs> body overall, then I'm gonna need to drink some more water because that's kind of a thing for me. But as usual, I like to break things down into months. So I have been using this pretty much, I'm not sure why that randomly says quads, um, pretty much most of this year. This is just a place for me to track my overall health, some of the key metrics like diet, I need to see what I'm eating. I'm trying to steer towards certain types of foods and remove myself from others like high sugar and stuff like that. So I don't always fill out the diet section, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, sometimes I just forget. Um, and if I do, I just put a dash because it's not the end of the world. But I do like to always include my exercises. So as you can see here, I've got options already created. So if I went to the gym and did yoga, boom, I would click yoga. Or if I did whatever that day, spin class, you know, so forth. Then I count my steps. I don't count them, that would be ridiculous. But <laughs> my um, Fitbit counts them and I just put that into there. Wait, any notes. So that's the health portion of this. Then we have, my literal whole life is like managed by this thing. Then we've got finances. So I've kind of just left this blank for now because I'm not really trying to, you know, expose my whole life. But here on the, the homepage of finances, I just like to have my income goals for the year, my investment goals for the year, uh, saving goals for the year. And then again, we go down into monthly budgets. So here it's just a, sorry, let me just go right here. It's just a normal budget kind of template. You know, you've got outgoings, Again, categories just always keeps things clean and easy to view. I've taken some of the numbers out because I just probably it's not necessary to see that. And I've taken the numbers out for my income, but yes, and then I have my income sources here, or a few of them, and what's going on there. The entrepreneurship area is, I won't go into that because I don't really feel like there's any point right now, but it's just, again, in a similar fashion that I've done with everything else, I like to, to keep my entrepreneurship ideas, plans and stuff like that in this particular space. Um, and I can create even like sub, um, what are those called? Pages and stuff like that. And then career planning, kind of similar. So I had something that I had called the career matrix, which is uh, when I was kind of deciding what route I wanted to go down next kind of recently, I had this all filled out with some of the ideas or some of the pros and cons of each of these particular job roles. And the career matrix I think is really good if you're thinking about where to go next and stuff like that. It's just something I just thought made sense. And then, but career planning is, there's some reasons why I think career planning are a little bit quiet at the moment, but <laughs> we'll talk about that in another video. Um, let's get into something exciting. Okay, I also have job applications. Let me show you this, this might be useful. If you are applying for jobs and you want to keep track. It's really important, I think, when you're applying for jobs to keep track of what you've actually applied for, the company, uh, the country, if that's appropriate, the application stage, like I have, did you reject it, offer made, first interview, deferred, waiting for feedback, where are you? And any notes, uh, again, so that you can just see where you are. Because it's so easy to lose track, like, especially if you're applying for loads of places, then yes. Travel, let's talk about travel, we're almost at the end. But here we have Travel Central, as I have called it which is where I have here my upcoming trips and you can kind of click in and um, I can fill this out. Right now, these are places that I want to go like next year because so there is an option to say is it booked or not on here. But yes, that's this space here. Um, and then we've got my travel directory. So I have a packing list that I've created um, countries of interest, some digital nomad options and stuff like that. And then this is linked to my Google Maps over here, this map here, so that I can pin places on there, you know, pin hotels, stuff like that, places I wanna see, and then come into here and see that all in kind of one place. And then I just have my travel calendar view for any booked holidays, booked travel. Um, the final thing is AI preparation. Guys, if you saw my video on artificial intelligence, you'll probably know why I'm, I now have a section dedicated to that um, because the world is changing and I want to be prepared for whatever's happening effectively. So that's that section there. Do you want to see like my packing list and stuff? Here's how I've structured my packing list. I just have it in a board view. I have like clothes, shoes, tech, toiletries, stuff like that. Things that I'm going to keep using or likely to use over and over again. And Let's go back to Travel Central, which other ones do I have? Oh, I've got some countries of interest. These are just places that are kind of on my list of where I would like to go. And then some digital nomad options where I'm starting to like pros and cons of places that I 
may visit. That is my Notion setup. I wanted to go through it relatively quickly and give you a high level overview because I think planning in itself is a whole video really and how I use some techniques and stuff like that to, to get the most out of planning. But Notion is a really fantastic tool. Um, I use it at times in conjunction with my written planner. Although I find myself using that less and less. Like there was a time when I was definitely more leaning towards writing out things, but now it's just Notion. You can use it on your phone as well. So um, you can use it on the go, in mobile format, um, and it's really good. One thing I will say though is like, as you can see, like I do a lot of brain dumping in Notion, but when I'm on the go, I don't find Notion as easy to open and operate and use on my phone. So I do typically use notes. Like if an idea comes to my head, straight into notes because it's easy to open it's easy to make, make a title and be able to come back to it later and then later on i will embed it into notion so if you're still wanting more in terms of visualization planning check out this video here